You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts on Netroots Radio or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for November 5th, 2021. It's not safe for work. Recorded live from the Cornfield Resistance, where we keep learning the same lesson over and over again. When they advertise as big and tall, they really just mean big. It's the professional left with Drift Class and Blue Gal. Poor Drift Class. Hey, Blue Gal. Yes, poor me. I'm sitting here, my, my recording studio, which, you know, is vast and, and well-appointed. It's, it's, it's your closet. It's my, it's my clothes closet with my head stuck halfway between my shirts. And uh, it works fine. But um, I, I gaze upon my clothes and go, yeah, I have enough. I, have enough. I, don't, I, don't need, I don't need the world to fit me anymore. I don't need to find. I have scoped out um, farm and fleet and family and feet, fleet and family and farm and other large stores that fit you know hunters yeah <laughs> they have an right. acre of pants and if i can find one pair among the thousand they have there that have my inseam and my waist size yeah. uh it's it's a miracle so yeah because your waist size is small right. and your inseam is extraordinarily long yes it is yes so it is. drift glass as everyone who listens to this podcast knows is six foot eight right and you're not a string bean, but you're not rotund at all. You're no. you're, and you're proportionally proportional. Yeah. And um so if you see me at a distance with no scaling around me of any kind that you can judge by, I just look like a normal functioning human being. And then you walk up to me and go, God damn. <laughs> he's a circus freak. Well, you know, not exactly true, but I, I figured that's the reason they don't invite me onto the Bulwark podcast. No, the, no, that's not. I'm it. too tall. I'm too tall for that. <laughs> he's too tall. I'm too tall. He's I mean, too tall. everyone. I, this is this is true. This is an absolute fact. I've researched it. Everyone at Prod Save America is like five two and under. Yeah, they're they're and small. They're tiny. They're they're yeah. William Shatner small. Um. So I guess that there's just no room for people like me because I'd have to – it would be like going into the, the Shire as Gandalf. <laughs> I, I'd bump my head all the time. i have to stoop over to talk to them. Oh, God. I'd be tweaking their cheeks because they're so adorable. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. Drift Glass it, does, when he enters a new place, tend to hunch over just a bit. As, a ha- as a habit to make sure he doesn't bump into the door frames. Oh, yeah. No, I I'm, yeah. I have scars on my forehead from – I tell this story once in a while. I know exactly how tall the door frame at the Oriental Institute um, Egyptian display was, at least in 1976 or so. <laughs> it, was it, exactly, it, <laughs> it was exactly the line of my glasses. Uh-huh, and uh-huh. I went loping down a, a brief hallway, a short hallway, and thought that I had the doorway cleared until I woke up and found that I hadn't cleared the doorway. Uh-huh. Oh, and I just wanged horrible. my head really hard. So I uh, blame it all. On this guy hitting his head on a door frame, um, yeah, years ago. There you go. All my bad politics is are to blame. Listen, we've had a really busy week. We um, have. We started off, you know, last week's podcast. Wish Drift Glass a happy birthday. Wonderful yeah. time. Yeah. Friday we worked in. The, I worked in the morning, and then Drift yep. Glass took me to Bloomington, Illinois. Bloomington. Yeah. Which is a lovely little town. Yeah. Home of Illinois Wesleyan, and. Uh, a lovely downtown with mm-hmm. a little used bookstore and a yarn store. That was the important thing that I needed to check a, out. A downtown that was almost entirely shut down when we got there. Yeah, because of um, trick or treat. Trick or treat. Yeah. <laughs> Friday they, night. They, yeah. <laughs> they shut it down and let the kids walk, which is a great idea. Yeah. They, nobody gave us the memo though, so we uh, we had a hard time parking. But we did. Uh, yeah. So we we really enjoyed Bloomington, Illinois. If you're doing uh, mm-hmm. want to do a little tour and spend a weekend someplace fun. Uh, it's cute. And it there's, is. there's no chain restaurants in the downtown It's about three or four blocks of locally owned antique shops. And when I say antique, I mean, 1950s furniture, 1960s yeah. furniture, hippie stuff. Yeah. Bookstores and, this bookstore, and coffee shops. Bob's Bay books uh-huh. was, has robots all across the top shelves and a yes. very good selection of new fiction and mm-hmm. old stuff we found. We I didn't buy out. it, but we found an old typewriter 
We instruction did. manual oh, that we was, just loved. It was gorgeous. It was gorgeous. And uh, I found out the hard way the robots are not for sale. They're not for sale. I took pictures, but they're not for sale. Not for sale. But um, And you got it. I bought you a birthday gift at the bookstore, you too. You did. Want to talk found about a, it? We found a commemorative glass uh, for the Apollo 12 launch from November mm-hmm. of like 1969. Like a juice glass. Yeah. You got red, white, and blue. These are from Marathon Oil. They were given away at gas stations. Um, the names of the astronauts on the side, you know, we're returning to space. Um, and I posted it at my blog because, you know, that's content as far as I'm concerned. That <laughs> that glass is now tax deductible, which is great. No, <laughs> no it's a birthday present. But I got a, a lovely uh, reply from Charles P. Pierce, Charlie Pierce, brother Charlie Pierce, in my comment section. Oh, that's Telling nice. me the story of Apollo 12 because Charlie Pierce knows everything about everything. Um I did not know this story. I, I, do you mind if I tell it? It's real no, quick. go right ahead. Um, Apollo 12, um, I think I knew this, was struck by lightning as it was taking off. This is the the ship before the disaster of, of Apollo 13. Um, this was the boring one. We're going back to the moon. Now that we've worked everything out, it was struck by lightning as it took off, and, which knocked out everything. Um, uh, completely knocked out the, the power system, knocked the computer offline, they were screwed. Um, and they had like two or three hours of emergency backup battery power to run anything. And that was it. So the guy who was in charge of electronic communications, um, and I believe the guy who was in charge of aborting the mission, because you can't go to the moon with that kind of thing, would have had to do the thing they had planned, which was jettison the capsule, uh, have it parachute into the ocean, and then blow up the, uh, the Saturn rocket which would have been bad. <laughs> that would have been real bad. But this guy noticed what he thought was a pattern of the lights that were screwing up on the computer screen. He said, I think I've seen this particular error before um, a year ago in a simulation. And he, and he just, and he said, yeah, I think I've seen this before. Nobody knew what he was talking about because he was a nerd. So this one nerd recognized what he thought was not the error, but the pattern of the error and thought he remembered there was a a thing called the SEC switch and you needed to switch it to aux, which is something that nobody knew what it was really or what it did except a few people. And it certainly had never been used for this, but he thought that was the thing they'd figured out maybe would do something like this. And he kicked it up the chain of command and everyone above him said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> what switch is that? I've never heard of this. These are people who train for weeks and months in the simulator who know where everything is. And they're like, what the hell switch are you talking about? Gets all the way up to the top. And mind you, the clock is ticking. They have to abort or not, like in the next few seconds. And they flip the switch off and on and it works. Reboot. Um, rebooted the machine, <laughs> and flew to the moon. And apparently like Alan Bean laughed for the next 10 minutes because it, mm-hmm. it was, it was, it was one of those things where this is as bad as it gets without the thing blowing up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and they just figured it out on the fly because some nerd remembered something. You remember the saw. light patterns from yeah. training. Yeah. And that and Charlie Pierce, bless his heart, dropped that into my chat. Oh, that's uh, nice. And I, I thanked him. Pro, uh, well, I'm thanking him now. So thank you, Charlie yeah, Pierce. Thank I know you, you listen to the podcast. And, big... then, and then Sunday was Halloween. Yes. And uneventful, utterly uneventful. It was totally uh, eventful because totally Junior eventful. Dude was in a car wreck. Yeah, he got and he's okay. Mm-hmm. Let's let's interrupt and just say immediately, everyone he's... is fine. No one was injured. Yeah, but his car was totaled. Yes, it was, and it was totaled and... a long way from home. Yeah, an hour from home. Yeah, so we had to go pick him up and his friend, and uh, get them back, and then figure out about the insurance and figure out about replacement cars and so forth and and the insurance company is being quite good to us about it i think Mm -hmm. um everything's working out we got him (laughs) we went and picked up a rental car for junior dude good god now we bought him a used used toyota corolla from a few years ago this was his first college car right you know white paint few scratches yeah not you know, this is a basic model car. No, Which he frills. had gotten all the way across the continent and back. Yeah, he driven to Washington State and back this through summer. mountains and snow and fire and demons. Yeah, and all crazy, kinds of things. Yeah. crazy times. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so the car rental place gave him an 
orange red Dodge Charger. Yeah. <laughs> like great. this massively new fully loaded muscle car. Great. It's a, it's a midlife crisis car. But he, yeah, that he gets to drive for like 6 days. Yeah. <laughs> great. So. So it's been kind of busy. And then we yeah. had to drive back to the scene of the accident to clear you out did. his car yeah. the next day. And that was yesterday. Clean um, out the car. Yep. And so, you know, we've had kind of, our schedules have been a little off this week. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. And um, so, I haven't had did, time to. And we didn't watch the election returns on Tuesday no. night. We watched Caddyshack. Yeah. <laughs> which just needed a break. <laughs> the, the uncut, unexpurgated version uncut. with a little bit of nudity and a lot of swearing in it. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think and, that should be a, a tradition in our household. On election night, we watch yeah. Caddyshack. Yeah. Well, <laughs> you know, once you've done all you can do. Right. Exactly. Um, and, and the ball is in the air. And there's just mm-hmm. nothing that you can do other than watch Steve Kornacki, you know, sweat blood out of his eyes mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. 12 straight hours talking about, you know, this intersection of this street corner might or might not be doing this thing based on these. That's that's a great skill to have. I don't need to watch a person do it. Um, it's too stressful. And that's honestly, the point. It's too stressful for me. I, I'm that nail biting 24 seven, 24 and, hours of nail biting over something at the, at the point where you have no control. The polls are open. The polls are going to close, you know, 12 hours later mm-hmm. and you have no control over what's going to happen. Right. I, I, I get very stressed out. Well, and, and so. the fact that the, this was hyped as the most important. It always off, is. Yes. Off, off your election in the history of the Republic. <laughs> The future of the Democratic <laughs> Party hinged on whether oh, yeah. Terry McAuliffe won in a squeaker, in which case that's bad news for Democrats, or he lost like every other time there's been a change in administration going since, back 40 years. Since, as someone put it on Twitter, since you light up my life was on the charts, yeah, yeah. right? Which, 1977. <laughs> but what, what would be unique if history did what history does this time is it, it would be the end of the Democratic Party as we know it. And that was... and. Honestly, the the thing that we get out of this is mm-hmm. not watching the the TikTok of election night. A lot of people get off on that. Good for you. Um, it is zooming out to twenty or thirty thousand feet and looking at how invested the mainstream media is in selling one fucking story. Yeah, Biden administration is in a death spiral. Yeah, Democrats are in trouble. Right. Republicans are resurgent and. That's the only story they want to tell. And mm-hmm. it doesn't matter. External circumstances don't matter. History doesn't matter. What happened last week doesn't matter. The fact that 80% of the country is vaccinated doesn't matter. The fact that this is, you know, the 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 Democrats failing actually comes down to just two contrarian assholes holding everyone else hostage. Mm-hmm. None of that matters. None of that even enters into the conversation. Because people, air quotes, don't care about stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, you know what? Actually, people do. And the the loose way in which the news media, and I'm talking about people on MSNBC too, the liberal oh, yeah. media, yeah. S- interchange the words Democrats and voters and America and people and Republicans and both sides when they clearly have, you know, saying ex cathedra what the people want, what voters want, what voters are confused by is insane when half the voters in this country are paying attention and are serious about democracy and would like reform and half the voters in this country are fascist zombies who don't declaring that there's some national conscience that is offended by X or Y is -hmm. insane. And there's a Mm -hmm. little wobbly group in the middle who just want to be on the winning side. I don't want to have to make up my mind about anything. I want to change my mind every couple of years because I don't know, I don't pay any attention, but I want to feel like a citizen. Um, anyway, well, and and let let's do our election stuff all up up at the top, sure, and then, and then well, do the podcast stuff. Um, Dan Frumkin at PressWatchers dot org said on Twitter, "In what kind of fucked up world do political editors, the day after a dishonest and racist strategy seems to them to have worked, assign stories about how cool that was?" Mm-hmm. And they do. They do. They do. You know, oh, education was the most important topic. No, it's racism. It's the white fragility, which, as I said all day, was the hell of a drug for certain Virginia voters and mm-hmm. white women in particular by by a narrow margin vote Republican because of white fragility. Yeah. Well, and, and as you and I were discussing um, during the week, 
especially uh, this morning. The people who won Virginia, conservative media and the mainstream media won Virginia. Right. Because the conservative media that is dedicated to absolutely lying all the time, every day about everything, uh, unreachable, untouchable, th- those voters. And then there's that, as I said, the wobbly group, a tiny wobbly group in the middle who flip-flop all the time. The the story the mainstream media has gone back to telling um, and has been telling for 30 years or 40 years is both sides are the same. Both sides are the mm-hmm. same. Both sides are equally bad. Both sides are equally corrupt. Both sides are... There's really no difference between Republicans and Democrats. The leading proponent of that was a guy named Matthew Dowd, who has you know, undergone the third, you know, tuck and roll his the third paint job he's had in the last 20 years. But that is the story. And having dealt with conservatives personally and directly for since the eighties, since the nineties, I've had conservatives in my life, all my life. And you can argue and rebut and argue and rebut and push them and prove them wrong time after time. And their fallback position is always, always, well, you know, whatever, both sides are bad. Both sides are bad. And as long as that's at the bottom of their brainstem, that the, the wobblies in the middle do not understand the threat that we're facing. The mm-hmm. thing that we get screamed at all the time by our by our, our allies, by our never Trump allies, is that we Democrats don't take democracy seriously. No. The centrists don't take democracy seriously. Because if they did, they would side with the pro-democracy party. But the fact that they can flip-flop back and forth based on the price of milk or nothing, or the fact that, you know, I just want to see the other guys rule for a while. You know, this this a, whole- A fake story about the price of milk, which yeah. is trending today. Yeah. yeah. A yeah. fake story about the price of milk, uh, because I know in our family, we drink 12 gallons of milk easy, <laughs> uh, like every day. I <laughs> no, bathe in this shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's that kind of, it just, it's, it, it is sometimes, I'm feeling it right now. I don't want to feel it. I want to do this podcast, but it feels- like you're drowning in this shit sometimes. Mm-hmm. But there's just no honest reporter left on the earth anywhere because you look up and see, but both sides aren't the same. And once, why do people in that the wobbly 3% in the center always like, you know, I, I would like to vote against fascism, but the price of milk went up 80 cents. So, you know, I, I really don't know. And then you find out it didn't. And you find out it didn't. <laughs> But it yeah. might have. I feel like it did. I feel like my children are being brainwashed. They're really not. And the answer is, well, what's the what's the default setting in your brain? Well, the mm-hmm. default setting in my brain is that both sides are the same. Yeah. Well, so you just run back to that if you're a centrist every time there's a crisis. And unless the Republican Party is actively kicking down your door and burning down your democracy in front of you with a big orange monster carrying the torch, you'd rather just blame both sides. So it, it really does take tanks rolling up to your door, if you're mm-hmm. a centrist, to take this shit seriously. But we're the ones who get dinged constantly about, we don't take this threat seriously. And that just, it galls me. It galls me there's no way into this system. So Virginia was won by the mainstream press telling voters that there's no difference between the two sides and that and the, and the Demo- Democrats don't know how to govern. And there's a circular firing squad. And the conservative press telling conservatives the lies they always tell them. Right. So congratulations. Oh, well, one other group is, is responsible for this, the Lincoln Project. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to congratulate the Lincoln Project on their almost unbroken record of getting Republicans elected and reelected over the last the two years. What is the deal with that? I, I don't fucking know. <laughs> that seems to be their cause now is to get Republicans elected. Because I, I, that's what they actually do. There, there is a story. There's a story. I, I think it's called. I think it's Philip K. Dick's unfinished story, called Radio Free Albemuth, uh, in which the the Richard Nixon character is secretly the first communist president of the United right, States, right? Because he uses his super super anti communism to get into the White House, and he's actually a communist, and it's all it's all a it's all a trick. Uh, but if you look at their Lincoln Project's win loss record from the <laughs> from the 2020 election, they got. Lindsey Graham elected, reelected. Yeah. They got Susan Collins reelected. They got um, Tom Tillis and Johnny Ernst and John Cornyn. All the people they targeted as easy, soft targets were reelected with no trouble at all. At, now, granted, liberals pissed away, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 million dollars in money giving to these idiots to make videos to make liberals happy that affected nothing and did nothing except piss off Republicans enough to go vote for Johnny Ernst. And now, 
the last fucking day of the election, the last fucking day of the campaign, these yahoos decide they're going to do Charlottesville cosplay yeah. and give the fucking centrists and the fucking Republicans, anyone still on the wall going, well, I guess this was a false flag operation. I guess Democrats do play dirty. I guess both sides are equally shitty. Well, I might as well just vote for uh, for this Youngkin guy. He seems or stay kinda, home. Or stay home. Yeah. So congratulations, Lincoln Project. You have taken, uh, it's a genius move. You have convinced a bunch of liberals to give you tens of millions of dollars to get, in effect, Republicans elected and reelected. Because that's your record. Your record of, of wins and losses is lots of Republican wins, a couple of losses, like Martha McSally, who's doomed anyway. Uh, she lost. That's great. But pretty much it's, it's like 90 percent. So way All to right, go, Lincoln Project. Let me share some of the good news, Drift Glass. This sure, I love good news. Give me and, good news. And Rachel Matter did a great job of talking about how winning, you know, the governorship in New Jersey really broke a streak yeah. going back as well of of even even though it was close. A win is a win. And reelecting a governor in New Jersey, the Democrat doing that is a big deal. Also, I want to talk about. The silent majority in Ohio and Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin Dems uh, really rocked it. I got uh, a fundraising email from Tony Evers, the governor of Democratic governor of Wisconsin. Um, you know we have a middle child going to college in Wisconsin. Wait a minute, no, you got to back up. You mean there's a state in this country other than Virginia? I was <laughs> I was unaware of this. And, the and Democratic people... governor of Wisconsin uh, is up against it with a Republican legislature that is nuts. Right. But this these are the Republican legislators that stripped that office of all of its powers yeah. before he took over. Because right. fuck you, we don't want we you know because we want you to be have to be able to do anything. Right. Right. But uh, Tony ever sent me a fundraising email because I'm on every single list on the planet. I'm sure you are too. Yep. Uh, and what he said was, while last night's headline grabbing election results weren't what we wanted to see, I wanted to make sure you heard about our major victories in Wisconsin. In response to school boards, following my example by listening to medical experts and implementing safety measures, Republicans launched four recall campaigns to try to replace school board members over COVID. Even Rebecca Cleefish, who's the Republican running for governor next time in 2022 mm -hmm. and her allies went all in for these candidates knocking doors and directing money to fund these divisive recall campaigns on school boards mm -hmm. i'm thrilled to be able to tell you that all four of these republican-backed recall campaigns were defeated these results are a clear rejection of republicans using our children's safety as a political pawn and i couldn't be more proud here in Wisconsin, the Republican playbook failed. Excellent. Good news. Ohio Dems tweeted, In Ohio, Democrats swept key races for mayoral offices. Voters in the cities of Lima, Toledo, Youngstown, Cincinnati, and Cleveland chose Democrats to lead for the next four years. Aftab Puraval ran on gun control as a Moms Demand Action endorsed candidate in Cincinnati. And he won. And Chantel Brown was elected to the House from Ohio. Wow. I didn't I didn't hear any of this on the big news uh, <laughs> organs that pass through this house. That's it's weird how I missed all that. Yeah. I guess I wasn't, you know, paying close enough attention to And uh, let's not forget my favorite story from oh. 2021. Michelle Wu, the first female and the first person of color to be elected mayor of Boston whose son said the best thing I've ever heard. My son asked me, she said, the other night, if boys can be elected mayor of Boston. And Michelle Wu told the audience that she told her son, they have been and they will again someday, but not tonight. <laughs> oh, that's, that's awesome. That's just awesome. You want to talk about uh, Yasha Monk? I, I, I did. Um, Yasha Monk is you probably don't know who this guy is. Uh, he is a 39-year-old German-American political scientist who is currently an associate professor uh, of practice at John Ho Johns Hopkins University, their School of Advanced International Studies. But he is the go-to political philosopher, guru, uh, etc. He's he's part of the new conservative 
you know, Niskin in center. We're going to find our way forward bunch. He is the darling of the Bush dead ender crowd of the neoconservative crowd. He shows up on the Bulwark podcast. He's shown up there several times. Uh, the last time talking about the evils of liberal cancel culture. Um, <laughs> David Brooks. I'm sorry quote, for laughing. I know, but... I know, but you know, this guy is so smart and he's, mm-hmm. and, and everyone just hushes up and listens to him. This, you know, German American guy uh, talk about, just tell them what they want to hear. Spin them fairy tales. Like I said, David Brooks quotes him regularly. This is this is one of the people who's going to be in the vanguard of the conservative renaissance that never happened and never will happen. Mm-hmm. And what he had to say about the Virginia election is this. You can't win an election by telling voters that their concerns are imaginary. And there's so much to unpack in that Oh, sense. my God, there is. First of all, by telling what voters? Yeah. By telling which vote, who, which voters are you talking about? Because uh-huh. elections are all about honestly telling people that your side is right and their side is wrong. Uh-huh. So, so secondly, I think maybe he and I need to have a chat about Charlottesville. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you telling me that confronting the um, the the Charlottesville Nazis? The Jews will not replace us Nazis and telling them that their concerns are bullshit and imaginary and pushing back against that, that that's a bad idea because they're all voters. They all voted for Trump. So are you, what is the appropriate approach? Because I remember the last time we decided to let a bunch of fascists just appease them, just give them what they want. Just, you know, wave, wave a, wave a treaty over their heads, you know, just give them Poland or right, give, them, give them this, just, just give them what they ask for and we'll appease them. And I'm, I think this political science major, who's the darling of the right or the, the new newly discovered woke right, the, the bulwark right, doesn't really understand the threat our democracy is under <laughs> and doesn't really take it seriously. Because if he took it fucking seriously, he'd understand that the imaginary concerns of Republicans involve horrifying things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. solving the problem of liberals in this country once and for all. Getting rid of democracy altogether and ruling this country like a theocracy. And that pushing back against the theory that liberals are evil and government is bad. all And all the imaginary shit that, that Fox News shits into their head every day is actually the work of democracy. And not coddling them and pandering to them and saying, well, you know, maybe you're right. Maybe there is a big Jewish conspiracy, but can't we find a middle ground? Maybe black people are <laughs> inferior, but can't we find like a middle ground? You know, maybe the Confederacy was a good idea, but telling people that that's imaginary is mean and 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 demeaning and calling them stupid. Oh my God. So again, I don't understand anything about this sentence other than it's the kind of centrist, pandering, appeasing democracy corroding bullshit it's appeasing, it's appeasing racism it is it is it is exactly that and white and, privilege absolutely and that's, that's what it's why doing. you know my concerns about how my daughter might be taught that slaves mm-hmm. were unhappy in their in their condition mm-hmm. and that white people enslaved black people at one time i don't want my children to hear about that those are my concerns and, yeah. and i i understand that you know th- this hilarious thing about d- the problem is democrats messaging well we've talked about this before where mm-hmm. yeah democrats messaging could be better um and they could do a lot of good if conservative media never existed and if conservative <laughs> media hadn't spent 30 years polluting the brains of people on the right and if mainstream media would stop being in the both sides do it business to start reporting threats accurately and if one fucking liberal with money in their pocket would have actually funded liberal media to give us a delivery system mm-hmm. because all of these things depend on getting the message in front of in front of who who exactly remains out there to be persuaded and mm-hmm. if you have a i have a i have a warehouse full of silver bullets I have no delivery system for them. So the idea that you can find voters who are deeply committed to terrible ideas and gently persuade them away from that. Maybe that was true 30 years ago, but it's not true now. I don't like Fox except for Hannity. Uh, Hannity's got it all. (laughs) I don't know what I'm going to do. You know how many times I've seen that? I Mm -hmm. don't like Fox except for 
the yeah. primetime lineup. Yeah, except for all the people who who tell me what I want to hear right. about exactly. you know, all about what replacement theory and how it's all a hoax. Yeah. And you know yeah. the shots are really uh, fascism, magnetic, Mag- and have satanic stuff yeah. in them. Yeah, and the idea that those people are persuadable is hilarious. All right, I got I got to give you a headline. This is this dovetails exactly with what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. There is a tweet from CBS News. Oh, the official you know. blue checked account. The story has an illustration, a photograph of a elementary of an elementary school classroom. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the teachers in the front, and you're looking at the backs of the children sitting at desks. Right, and. It's a mixed race classroom, and Ooh. there is a clearly, obviously, African American girl raising her hand for the teacher. That's uh-huh. the photograph. Now, that's a right. stock photo. Sure. No problem. You know, you use those to illustrate stories. I have no that's, problem with that. That's Norman Rockwell, okay? Right. That's great. Norman Rockwell. It's, you know, sitting in with a white person on one kid, white kid on one side, an African kid on another side. And the, the African-American girl in the middle is raising her hand to give an answer to the teacher. Stock right. photo. Mm-hmm. And the answer she's giving is death to the West, right? <laughs> the question the question in the headline of the CBS News story is, how young is too young to teach kids about race? <laughs> and my reply was, the black girl with her hand up has the answer. <laughs> Follow me. I know. I got an answer for you. I, I, I believe your TV husband, Ely Mistel. Yeah, she, uh, he'd have the answer too. I believe he responded to this. Oh, like, did he? Yeah. Like, oh. ask any black family. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Immediately. Because if you don't, you're going to be killed. Yeah. Or you're going to yeah. be brutalized. Or you're going to be horribly disappointed. Well, yeah. and speaking of killing and brutalizing and so forth, I think it's time for us as Democrats Yes. You know, not we've been we have had people complain about us that we're not progressive enough. And I'm more than willing to be pushed further to the left. Sure. Feel free. Sure. <laughs> um, but I think we Democrats need to understand that being the silent majority is understandable in this environment. Yes. Yeah. Because you have mentioned being yelled at. You have mentioned, you know, shooting at people and so forth. Mm-hmm. What's going on? Uh, white liberals are all of a sudden learning what black people have known their exactly. entire lives. Exactly. And that's shocking. That they to are, them. It is shocking to us. Mm-hmm. It is. I, mm-hmm. I take, I take that on for myself too, mm-hmm. that one reason we don't speak up and, and, you know, go to school board meetings and yell back at these crazy people when there's mm-hmm. critical race theory nonsense is I mm-hmm. don't want to get shot. Yeah. Yep. I don't want to be, you know, have have my house picketed mm-hmm. or toilet papered or spray right. paint on my front door. Mm-hmm. I don't want the hassle of that. And it and, will come to your door. Yeah. And that's that is that is the realization that this mob is not going to be dispersed. It's not yep. going to go away. Right. It's not going to be appeased. And whatever they win today. They'll be hungry again tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. Fox News will have a fresh pile of red meat to feed them about some other crazy batshit thing. Whether it was Solyndra or the Tarmac or Benghazi or, and now it's critical race theory. And, you know, someone said critical race theory is the new Sharia law. Oh, no, it's the new everything. It's It's the new everything. (laughs) It's the new Fast and Furious. It's whatever they can use to brainwash them for the next time. Yeah, well, they're... and, and. I would just disagree to this. They're already brainwashed. This is just the new trigger word. We're going to teach you a new word. trigger no, well, word. No, that's what I mean. Yeah. yeah. yeah and that's what I because mean. Because you got it. Because, you know, if these people aren't kept constantly, like, within, agitated, within a blowing a blood vessel angry all the time, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they might forget to come out and vote. They might right. forget to watch Hannity. They might go right. do something else. So they must be kept angry all the time. So we need a constant. This is, you know, I, I, I likened this to drug addiction long before it became cool. Mm-hmm. Um, long before Charlie Sykes started talking about how this is remarkably like drug addiction. Yes, it mm. is, Charlie. And you were a pusher <laughs> for 30 fucking years. Yes. Um, yeah. But it it really is necessary to keep them. So there will, the, there is some sense in Democrats 
figuring out, which I don't think will ever happen, but in theory it should, that pick two messages, pick three things, not a hundred things. You want to get a hundred things done once you're in office. But when you're running for office, pick two things. Republicans hate children. Republicans want your drug prices to be ridiculous. Republicans voted against your right to vote. Pick a few of those things mm-hmm. and just message the fuck out of them using whatever means you can. The, the mainstream media is not going to let you talk. Conservative media is certainly not going to. But just don't shoot your mouth off in every direction. Don't be the cleverest kid in the room. When somebody comes up with something clever, going, yeah, but what about we put diapers on the stairs of the thing? And, you know, that would be funny, wouldn't it? No, no. See, you're trying to be smart. Stop being smart. Start being strategic. And figure out there's two or three messages that if we just beat Republicans to their knees with those messages, something actually might change. And I'm all in favor of that. But the other side of that is also true, which is no matter what you or I or the other 80 million Democrats in this country do, Fox News and Newsmax and Onan and the rest of them are going to find some guy living under a bridge in California on welfare, saying crazy shit, and they're going to make that guy the Democratic Party. Smoking pot on food stamps. No matter what you do, no matter what you do, they're going... And so this whole thing about you you have to be more disciplined in your message. Yeah, theoretically, that's true. But all the people who worked in this universe and have left it will tell you. This is is the part of, if you don't mind me um, segueing to an actual productive conversation I heard on the Lincoln Project podcast, of all places, with Stuart Stevens and Joe Trippi. And they were talking about how the the thing that Republicans built is unstoppable, that it doesn't really matter how good your message discipline is. They're going to find something to get angry about, and they're going to get angry about it. And this is just how the machine was built. And and it's it's and they were really good. They were like, you know, here's the problem. There is no liberal media. There's no liberal delivery system. There's no liberal TV show. There's no liberal network. Nothing. The liberals don't have it. The censor does, it's the mainstream press, and they're they're not your friends. They will dissipate everything. The right has it. They spent billions of dollars building this thing. Liberals built nothing. So liberals have no delivery system. But then they kind of break my heart a little bit mm-hmm. because they say the, the only members, the only members of this pro-democracy um, coalition that we need to build to stop this madness are the Lincoln Project and Midas Touch. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? You're leaving out all the fucking liberal bloggers and podcasters and activists who've been saying this for decades. You're leaving out black women. Yes. Too. Well, yes. Abs- no, absolutely. And the question then becomes, why every time this conversation comes up, do we valorize the people on the Republican side who figured this shit out five minutes ago and completely ignore all the people who've been right all along? And the answer is because there is currency. There's media currency. There's money to be the guy who figured it out first. Every time you hear one of these never Trumpers on MSNBC, the first words out of their mouth almost always are, you know, I warned that this was going to happen uh, several years ago. <laughs> you know, I saw this coming several years ago. You know, I, I and I alone figured this out. You know, no one takes democracy seriously other than me. So let me tell you, these other idiots out there, and this is Tom Nichols and this is Charlie Sykes and this is Steve Schmidt, all of them. All of them are, are just patting themselves on the back endlessly about their wisdom that they saw the Republican Party losing its mind 30 years too fucking late. And if you add black women to the mix, if you add liberals to the mix, suddenly these guys look like idiots. Mm-hmm. They look like they have been had their thumb up their ass, which they did, a very profitable thumb up, a very profitable ass <laughs> for years. And all the people who were warning them this was coming are the people they shit on for a living. And that's not a conversation any of these white, upper-class, elite Republican men want to have with anyone, which is why- Speaking of those types, talk to me about Adam Kinzinger. Oh, God. Oh, God. Okay. Who's now decided to, you know, leave the house. Yes. Adam Kinzinger. He wants, he's going to be on MSNBC, I bet you, or CNN, right? Well, he he hasn't ruled anything out yet, Blue Gal. (laughs) Just to let you know, he hasn't ruled anything out. (laughs) Adam Kinzinger is a uh, is a Republican congressperson from Illinois uh, who has been redistricted into a situation where he would have to compete with, with another Republican in a primary. And lose. And lose, because <laughs> he would lose. Yeah. And instead of saying, 
well, shit, <laughs> you know, these things happen. Uh, he and Mr. Charlie Sykes over at the Bulwark podcast, Charlie Sykes threw him one hell of a pity party today. Aww. I just before coming on the air, I listened to it. I just started laughing because it was it was something to see. Um, according to these two guys, by redistricting Adam Kinzinger, Democrats prove that they do not understand the seriousness of the threat to democracy our country is facing. <laughs> Because we're, this, we're willing to put, put aside the Voting Rights Act that Adam sure. Kinzinger voted well, against. That's the irony of it. You know, that, that's the, <laughs> the irony of it is Adam Kinzinger voted against all the reforms that might have saved Adam Kinzinger. Because right. Uh, right. what is what's always left out from the constant valorizing of two people in Congress who aren't 100 percent assholes, just 98 percent assholes, is that they keep voting against shit that is really important. And that Kinsinger. would actually help their party increase their vote voter turnout. I mean, this well, is something we learned in Virginia. If you make it easier to vote, which Democrats in Virginia have been doing for the past four years. People vote. People vote, including uh -huh. Republicans. It really is. Uh, Marcos Melitzas had a tweet about this yesterday. It's like, this really is nonpartisan. If you increase people's ability to vote. The it vote. really doesn't hurt Republicans. It does not hurt Republicans. No, well, it does in places where Democrats are likely to, you know, where there's where there's beat a them. Democratic supermajority. But that's you know, you're still going to have a Republican in Louis Gohmert's district get elected. Well, I'm sorry, all of that's bullshit because <laughs> I learned from listening to Adam Kinzinger and <laughs> Charlie Sykes weeping into each other's beer that what Democrats should have done in Illinois. Mm -hmm. is ignore Kinzinger's record of being just about the uh, no, just another obstructionist Republican asshole mm -hmm. and instead wisely decided to make common cause with him by because he's against Trump that's He's a Trump. He's yeah. a, he's against voting rights, he's against civil rights, he's a, he was against the recovery package, yeah. he's against the build back better. He's against he's everything. He's going to vote for Kevin McCarthy for right. speaker. Well that's 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 the end point, which is yeah. But Democrats should have – why don't Democrats just reach out with love and let him win, for God's sakes? <laughs> and it, you can just hear Charlie Sykes shitting blood. Like yeah. this – I, I used this analogy before. It's unfortunate. But Charlie Sykes is the polar bear. And Adam Kinzinger was the last sliver of ice <laughs> on which he was balancing himself, saying, there's at least one good Republican left in the world. And, he's, and, and you could just hear him under a blanket – Weeping, leave Adam Kinzinger alone. <laughs> leave him alone. He's the only thing I have left. And so he's he's not angry with the Republican Party becoming, you know, a, a exactly what he worked to make the Republican Party into, yeah. which is a yeah. he's mad at Democrats for trying to win seats in Congress. And well, and is, I love what you said about gerrymandering because, goddamn, mm -hmm. Illinois, the new map is gerrymandered it is it absolutely as is. much as it's ever been and uh junior dude is just obsessed because it's maps and maps are his thing and uh -huh. he's, here's the old map mom here's the new map switch between them mm -hmm. and we're in this little snake district that yeah. we that was drawn in you know last time that connects <laughs> cities it connects college cities mm -hmm. between the border with St. Louis all the way up this, to the center of the state to um, Champaign-Urbana. Right. Through part of the state capital, but all, not all of the not state capital. Not all capitals. of it. Right. <laughs> yeah. And it's a Democratic, it's designed, we haven't had a Democrat win this district yet, but no. they're working on it to right. have a Democratic district in south of Chicago. And... Uh, as I, as you have said to me, this is this is what I wanted to bring up. What you have said, which is, it's terrible to have gerrymandering going on in Illinois and New it's York and other places. Mm -hmm. But we're not going to unilaterally disarm. No, no, no. <laughs> Let's you... end it everywhere, and have fair maps everywhere. Sure, and, and we're for that. And that's that's what that's what makes me laugh is that these weepy, pathetic. Former Republicans are furious mm -hmm. at Democrats for not fighting hard enough and not taking <laughs> democracy seriously enough. And when we do fight hard, they're like, leave Adam Kinzinger alone. Yeah, we're leave fighting alone. For, well, to, to keep the Democratic House so that right. we don't have two years of Marjorie Taylor Greene 
holding up a fake version of uh, Hunter Biden's laptop Mm -hmm. and doing nonstop investigations with no progress for anyone for two years. If I had snuck onto the set with these two guys and had Mm -hmm. 90 seconds before security dragged me away, it would be, okay, let's let's suppose that uh, Adam stays in Congress. And let's suppose Democrats make common cause with Republicans, because that's a good idea. That always works. Yeah, well, and she's talking about Liz Cheney. Right. And Adam Kinzinger. That's but, it. But let, right? let's suppose that that we let Adam Kinzinger have his district. Mm-hmm. Um, and th- let's suppose he won. And the House flipped. And, and now there's a one vote Republican majority. And it's Adam mm-hmm. Kinzinger. Isn't that great? Um, does that mean Kevin McCarthy will not be Speaker of the House? Nope. Oh, no. Does that mean you won't have insane? Well, no. So all Adam Kinzinger does is add weight to the crazy side of the scale. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter how often he stands up, which is once in his fucking lifetime, and protest against one thing his party did that was that was unforgivable. Mm-hmm. The rest of his votes are going to be straight Republican Party ticket. Mm-hmm. And and if, if they decide to impeach Joe Biden, he'll vote for it. And if mm-hmm. they decide to impeach Kamala Harris, he'll vote for it. And if they decide to hold endless fucking hearings about... Hunter Biden, Hunter he will Biden's vote for that too. Laptop. And, yeah. and he will vote for Kevin McCarthy to be speaker. Or he'll he'll protest against it, but reluctantly lose because now we're in the majority and who, who fucking cares? Every time you add anyone with an R to the equation, things get worse. I don't care mm-hmm. how nice they are one day in their life. It doesn't matter. They are ballast on the side of evil. Now, if Adam Kinzinger wants to change parties and run as a Democrat, great. But Move to our district and run as a Democrat. But that's too icky because because the thing that underlines all of this is all these people, whether they're in the party, out of the party, right or never Trumper, MSNBC freak or uh, Fox News freak, they all hate liberals. They'll hate yeah. us with it. They, they, that's burned on the board. That's the, that is their default setting. They really, really despise the left. And so it is it is inconceivable to any one of them that they would become a Democrat because Democrats are the ultimate existential threat to democracy. Instead, they're going to go off and form the third party things or do boutique things or become lobbyists or whatever. But the idea that these people who spent their lives shitting on everything we value would get out of the fucking car and push would say, you know what? The problem isn't the 49, 48 Democrats in the Senate. The problem is Joe Manchin. I want to hear one fucking conservative on one fucking podcast say, you know what? My megaphone, which I usually use to scold Democrats for not capitulating to one guy, this one time I'm going to scold the one guy for not siding with his own fucking party. Mm-hmm. The problem is not the 48 Democrats who got who got the message and who are down with it. The problem are the two assholes holding it hostage. But that is something that you will never hear a conservative say. Right. Because they don't like us. They don't want us to govern. They want our party to be Mitt Romney 2012. Right. And the best bet for that is to give Joe Manchin the keys to the place. Jeff Glass, let's do a news roundup. Yeah, let's do that. The Bidening continues. CBS News projects New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy won re-election. Yay! This Yay. is a big fucking deal. It is a big deal. This bucks history. This wasn't supposed to happen. And it did. And we won. And take that, you lousy wet blanket folks on the Twitter. Um, After Senate Democrats dropped paid family medical leave from Joe Biden's Build Back Better spending package to appease President Joe Manchin, House Democrats added four weeks of paid family medical leave back into it uh, in response to that announcement. Joe Manchin has made it clear that he still hates women and children and opposes paid leave proposal adding... They know how I feel about that. A couple quotes from Joe Manchin this week on CNN. Incumbent Democrats should not campaign against incumbent Republicans because of their working relationship. Jesus Christ. It, that is that also, is also also on CNN. Manchin said this is not a center left country. No. Joe Manchin once again confusing his state, his inbred backward state with the rest of the country. And by the way. That whole thing that Democrats shouldn't campaign against and cover Republicans because of their good working relationship, that is exactly, that could have come out of Charlie Sykes' mouth. Yep. About absolutely. Adam Kinzinger. You shouldn't punish people just by running no, against them in a political system. No, it should be incumbency all, forever. Yeah. Yes. Uh, House and Senate Democrats reached an agreement on lowering prescription drug prices, which is a key part of Joe Biden's $1.75 trillion Build Back Better package. 
The proposed deal would establish a $2,000 out-of-pocket limit for seniors' expenses in Medicare Part D, allow the government power to regulate the prices of some of the most expensive drugs like insulin, which will have a $35 per month cap under the legislation. That's huge. That's huge. That is huge. If you just campaign on that, Republicans want your friends to With suffer diabetes to, 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 to die. die. To die f- for lack of the ability. Their needed medication. This is the Republicans are pro death panel. Let's face it. Yeah. 100% yeah. pro death panel. Democrats want to give you life saving drugs at prices you can afford. Republicans want you to die. Boom. Done. Next, next issue. Nonetheless, Joe Manchin still refuses to endorse the trillion dollar social. One point seven. I want to stop calling it that. Yeah. Nonetheless, M- Joe Manchin still refuses to endorse the plan saying he wants time to thoroughly understand the impact it will have on our national debt, our economy, and the American people. Yes. You should talk to some American people with diabetes. Yeah. Um, apparently, pen- Pentagon spending doesn't count. No, no. You don't have to worry about any of that. That's not going to cause inflation. You throw them an extra $50 billion, nobody will care. Yeah, they, they gave affect- them 5% more than Biden asked for. And and they're happy to take it and yeah. and just don't don't ask any questions about that and don't audit it yeah no for God's sakes uh, the CDC recommended the low dose Pfizer COVID nineteen vaccine for children ages five to eleven yay CDC director Rochelle Waleski's uh, recommendation came after a unanimous vote by the CDC's advisory committee on immunization practices supporting the use of the vaccine for the approximately twenty eight million children in the age group. Joe Biden called the decision a turning point in our battle against COVID-19, adding that the federal government has purchased enough low-dose vaccine for every child in America. Here's what I want to know. Won't that cause inflation? (laughs) And shouldn't Joe Manchin oppose that on the grounds that it might cause inflation? I think he probably did already. I see uh, nothing but delighted parents on Twitter saying they got their appointment with their pediatrician to get that shot for their kids. Yeah, but, but Adam Kinzinger, honey. You forgot mm-hmm. about the suffering of Adam Kinzinger. Trump is trying to prevent January 6th investigators from accessing handwritten memos from his chief of staff, call logs, files of top aides, White House visitor records, and drafts of election-related speeches. And he's he's failing. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a real shame. Uh, in this week's, but not Susan Collins, but not Mitt Romney news, Senate Republicans blocked the John Lewis Voting Rights Act from advancing. The legislation would have restored parts of the Voting Rights Act, which was gutted by John Roberts and the right-wing majority in the Supreme Court, including the federal government's ability to require pre-clearances from the Justice Department for jurisdictions with a history of discriminating before changing their voting rules. The final vote was 50 to 49, with Republican Lisa Murkowski voting with the Democrats in favor and Chuck Schumer changing his vote to no for procedural reasons, so he could have the legislation reconsidered later. Republicans have blocked the Freedom to Vote Act three prior times, insisting that the federal government has no business telling red states it can't steal elections and deny the right to vote to people who might vote for Democrats. You know who's really sad to hear that? Adam Kinzinger. Adam Kinzinger. The federal government, big government, might have saved him. But, you know, take it up with uh, Susan Collins. Take it up with Mitt Romney, because we proposed this shit. You guys shot it down. Only 33% of Republicans say they will trust the results of the 2024 presidential election, regardless of who wins, Mm -hmm. compared to 82% of Democrats. Now, here's a real sad story. Just brace yourself. Jenna Ryan, that that lovely and talented Texas real estate agent who flew all the way to D.C. on a private jet to try and help Trump violently overthrow the U.S. government, who live-streamed her crimes who bragged in a tweet that her, quote, blonde hair, white skin, a great job, and great future meant she was definitely not going to go to jail, will be spending 60 days in prison. It's all, send her thoughts and prayers. This is about nine years and 305 days too lenient, but it is something. A Georgia judge has acknowledged that there appeared to be intentional discrimination after a nearly all-white jury was selected for the trial of three white men accused of murdering Ahmed Arbery, but has seated the jury nonetheless. Yeah. Aw. Aw. You know, it, it might look bad, it might be bad, but it's Georgia, so, you know, what are you going to do? Um, and in local news, I just want to mention the fact that 
those of you who've listened to this podcast more than once uh, know that our local paper, the State Journal Register, is a rag. Uh, it's a four-page, basically a sh- uh, shop and save flyer um, with obituaries and sports in it and a few stories, mostly about places where I don't live, um, for Rockford, Aperia, whatever. But I will say this. The Lincoln Project, the Lincoln Project made it into our local paper this week. Their stunt. Their stunt. Their stupid fucking stunt in Virginia made it into a column in our local newspaper. So way to go, Lincoln Project. You're winning them over right and left, You're right down to the grassroots. The bubble. You're bursting yeah. the bubble and making mm-hmm. it into the local paper with Congratulations. your stunt. Congratulations. I, I, I think that's... Seventy million dollars of liberal money well spent, so mm. that so that they could get themselves featured on page three of our local Republican rag. Thank you, Jeff Glass. You're welcome, Blue I love you. I love you too. I skipped the story about JFK Jr. I skipped the story about 2015 revisited. Yeah, so but we're still at an hour, so that's good. Hey, I'm cool with that. 2015 will be there next week, <laughs> and so will QAnon. Yeah, they will. <laughs> <laughs> Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is a dog, Gilligan, who in this picture is riding a surfboard in a (laughs) pool. He's noted to be 12 pounds of total fearlessness. So go visit Gilligan at our Facebook page or website. And we'd also like to do a shout out to some representational Internet pets. Nicole Sandler is making COVID pet art. I was on Nicole's show on Tuesday this week, and a listener sent us a picture of one of Nicole's paintings. Very fun, very cool. Google Nicole Sandler pandemic painting to check them out. And we're quite sure in real life, these artist models enjoy only freshly poured pet food. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your animals will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh, my Lord, it's freshly poured. And you can send your internet kitty, dog, or other pet to us at our email address, prolefpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. Don't forget, we're having our letter show over the Thanksgiving weekend. We'd love to have your letter to include uh, in our letter show. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service Go Postal Unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag jail to joy. Don't forget our gourmet coffee guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, and yes, pumpkin spice season is over. Mm-hmm. They've already started with the peppermint latte nonsense. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, Excellent. We have a dividing line in our household. We do. There's a big, <laughs> there's a big candy stripe painted right down the middle of the living room. <laughs> Drift glass likes peppermint. I do. So, uh, but if you can afford to buy an espresso based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job, and it's a labor of love. And we do love you guys. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution. You can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Our PayPal postal address information, merch, all of it is there at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media. And if you love this podcast, please get someone else to listen to. And thank you so much for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties are amazed that the Virginia election made voter fraud go away so fast. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the wine and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. The Professional F Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2021 DGBG Productions.